Hey YouTube, hey YouTube, me 4000 me again, coming back at you, and this is, uh, eh, it is a subject that I believe in very dearly, and I'm going to read an article from Essence Magazine, it's the September 2011 issue, page 184. And it's called The Courage to Be Cute. And I'm going to read part of, I'm going to read the article and maybe not the entire article because I think I still only get 15 minutes. But um, I totally agree with this article. The woman who wrote this, her name is Karen R. as in Robert Good. It's called The Courage to Be Cute. Karen R. Good believed that pretty was a privilege until she decided it was a choice. She says, growing up, I considered myself a tomboy. Like me. Although I wore dresses and skirts, it was usually with a pair of shorts underneath so I could break into a sprint or kick up my leg if I felt like it. At dances, I wore second skin jeans, one of daddy's undershirts and a crisp white pair of tennis shoes, Fila or K-Swiss, because I like to move. And I certainly didn't think I was pretty. I was a dark-skinned black girl raised under a hot South Texas sun in the 1970s, long face, high forehead, braces, and a loud mouth that disguised a deep shyness. I can't count how many times I've been called black or worse. This was classic ugly duckling business that to this day must be monitored. I still get anxious sometimes when I walk past a group of guys for fear of ridicule. <gasps> I have that same thing still. See my video called Epiphany. Or I'll find myself walking with my head down. But you know you but you know you grow up, move to New York City, become a woman. Realize that you enjoy pretty things like lace, lingerie, and beautiful shoes. You begin to understand that insanity is allowing the real and imagined opinions of others to dictate how you feel about yourself. Never was this more important than when I took a job at a popular fashion and lifestyle magazine. Working in an environment where style was celebrated, indeed requisite was both Exasperating and thrilling. Exasperating because of the silly and seductive pretentiousness. Thrilling because every day was an inspiration. The pretty brown beauty editor who favored fabulous five inch heels. The breezy elegant fashion editor who was a style savant. The researcher with the voluminous hair. Voluminous hair. I marveled at their fragrant playful embrace of their beauty thought it was the bravest thing. Then came picture day. The staff was asked to wear black for a photo that would appear in the magazine. That morning I dressed myself in a pair of black pants, a blousey top, and a pair of black foreign heels. Respectable Jessica Simpson Gucci knockoffs. I wanted a pop of color and reached for my tomato red Kenneth J. Lane earrings. Big Spanish inspired perfect. My heart raced at the audacity of boarding the 9 a.m. subway so decked out. Who did I think I was? Tipping on the tightrope between honoring oneself and vanity wasn't easy. But when the security guard complimented me on my look, I felt like Tracy Chambers in Mahogany after the Italian billionaire stands up at the fashion show and bids 20 million lira for her design. Triumphant. Not that being cute is about outside validation. That day it was about celebrating my choice to be a swan. I love that article because sometimes I struggle with this. Um, sometimes I do vacillate between ugly duckling, duckling and quirky and I so identified with her Yesterday, I was um, shopping and a new Top Shop has the store. Top Shop has come to 
you know, the downtown area. And I saw so many things I loved. And right now they are out of my price point. But I think what um, is happening to me is that I no longer like want to be, like I said in another video, be in the background. And for me it does take courage to be cute because I'm always thinking people are just born cute. People are just, you know, this, that, and the other. And no, people make a choice every day to get up and look the way they look. And sometimes, like I've told you in many, many videos, I overthink things. Um, I just overthink them. I remember when at when you change just anything in your life, people notice. And I remember, like, I started coming to work looking a little better, a lot better. Like, you could tell I wasn't just throwing on clothes anymore. And one of the supervisors just made a comment. It was like I was getting positive comments from other people, but this one uh this one our uh, supervisor she just she took note and she made some snide comments and i think i replayed that in my head like people like you certain people like you when they feel you are beneath you and so i need to remember to just shine like, if I want to wear something, that's what I want to wear. But for some people like me, it is about the courage of being cute or looking better. It's so, in my head, I've, I've always been like, it's either or. Like, I can't be smart and beautiful. You have to pick either or. So, it's like when... I'm being, you know, take time to like well groomed and polished and looking cute. Like you, there are days when you know I'm having a cute day. I look at me, yeah. The feelings and what comes from that is what I struggle with. People noticing me. I'm no longer in the background. Do people think because I'm dressing up I'm a snob? Do they think I'm not a nice person? Do they think I'm a fashionista? And what does fashionista mean? Does it mean I'm just all about clothing and I'm shallow? No. So all these things are happening. But I do know now that it is okay to be a tomboy. Like, I still am a sports-loving fool. I am in the thick of watching the U.S. Open. I'm so sorry, Federer, you lost yesterday sidebar. Football season is starting up. I can't wait to listen to um, Howie and and um, Terry Bradshaw and those guys and how I resolve that you can be a tomboy and love sports and be smart, intellectual, and still look cute. That is a struggle for me. So this magazine and that magazine article was just it's just articulated everything that I can't articulate like right now little um we all have our things but I think now I'm I'm a late bloomer like everybody usually goes through this cute thing what in their teens not me like now I really want to play with fashion and play with clothing. And I'm like, oh my god, this should have happened in high school. But I couldn't because I, we have such a strict dress code. Another sidebar. Um, but yeah, I want to play with textures. And I think a lot of it has come from... I took the year off from buying things, so now everything is fresh and new. And now I want—I just want to live in abundance, and 
every want to take in new stuff and, and new things so yeah Essence Magazine the last three issues have been really good for a moment I wanted to cancel the subscription but they've really been maybe that's my new thing now discussions on articles from Essence magazines or from magazines any magazines that you know I find you know pertinent but yeah the courage to be cute like it's okay to want to look good and then I have to you know just balance all of that attention that comes from looking good so you know I've been a playing the wallflower background thing for so long it it does take a little bit of courage some of y'all are like I don't understand I don't get it good write me some comments that tell me how to get it I'm a progress I'm on my journey um, I'm really liking fashion now thinking about it what I put on how I want to look yeah um so yeah i do totally understood miss good's uh commentary on like when she walks past men sometimes she holds her breath or she gets anxious i still do that or you put your head down so i think now i'm, I'm going to walk in my light and my practice for the week or for the rest of my life it is to always monitor that kind of self-esteem and monitor don't look down if if anything I can do is just look up look people directly in their eyes stand tall don't wither away um yeah Chanel Cooper Sykes will be so proud bye